Hello, everybody. Namaste. Welcome to the study session. I hope you had a good break. Namaste, Sumi. Namaste. Uh, we're going to go live today on Vimeo, uh, so others can also join uh, in case they want. So uh, this is going to change hands right now, and let me go back. All right. So we're still waiting for people. So do you have any questions before we start off with today's session? We'll wait for a few more people to join in before we take it forward. Anything to ask? Uh, is it possible for me to know uh, my, what is that? Akashic record from an expert. Uh, probably if you know someone who can actually access it, um, you can. But remember, uh, it is out there and we are all interconnected, including uh, this amazing information. So sometimes if you go there, you can. Uh, there have been great, uh, in the past, a uh, um, couple of centuries ago, there have been some great, uh, I'm not sure if you can call them rish rishis, uh, who've actually written them on these uh, leaves, right? And so if you find them usually in the, in the southern part of India, there are these leaves on which literally uh, your life has already been written on before you even came here. So they probably access the Akashic records uh, to not only write about the past, the present, but also the future. Uh, people like you and me uh, who also had, uh, if you can call, uh, our lives written down on these amazing leaves. But they're distributed in different parts. If you can find them, that's another way to try and find out about uh, your Akashic records. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other question? Uh, Ma'am, uh, this is regarding yes. the root case, uh, uh, root, uh, root traces, uh, 4.1, 4.2. Is it related to our physical, mental, and emotional body uh, growth? Is it related to our emotional, mental body? Sorry, I didn't understand. The uh, like, uh, can you explain about that uh, 4.5? You were telling you were in a 4.5, right, ma'am? Uh, yes, with reference to the root races, uh, we've already finished with the first root race, second, then we're presently at the fourth. We've just kind of come to the middle of that and taking it upwards. And so the, the uh, future root races are still coming. Now, even in each root race, there is what you call sub root races. Yeah? That's another thing that uh, to be considered as well. Uh, now, with reference to the various bodies that you and I have, uh, when we when we start to evolve as beings uh, here with our respective bodies as jivatmas or incarnated souls, it starts to also change. So the astral and mental bodies of our ancestors is very different from the ones that we have at this present point. Uh, it starts to show better qualities, better hues or colors. Yes, uh, the material also starts becoming better and better as we evolve. Okay, so um, I'm not too sure. P O K O. I'm trying to unmute you. Yeah. Hey. Your, your hand is raised, so I'm thinking you have a question. No. All right. Okay. Uh, Rakesh. Uh, hi, ma'am. Hi. Uh, regarding the impulse that you taught, uh, told on the first day or second day, yes. uh, when the seventh in impulse is sent, uh, yes. Is the seventh impulse taking the materials from the sixth impulse? Can you please explain that? How is that? And you said they are collecting it and then again distributing. So in that, uh, so what happens in the previous one? Uh, what it does, it it would create uh, the bubbles for also the next uh, impulse to use, literally like the raw materials, right? So they keep to themselves the sixth level. They keep whatever is required. So when the seventh uh, impulse comes in. It will take all of it, but unlike the others, this one doesn't do that because there's nothing to throw anymore. It's the end. So then it's, it, the, the effect of the last one is very, very different. So let me go back to that for you. I hope I can find that particular line. Yeah, regarding that, uh, I, <laughs> I got a bit confused. And that's okay, so let me just go back to chapter one. God's love. 
Oh, sorry, I'm in chapter two. That's why I can't find it. Hold on. Sometimes when you finish with pages, it, it's almost like you never find that page when you want it. Where is it gone? A large number of men, no, this is the adept. I'm trying to see if I can find all of that for you. Uh, it was on the uh, second day. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's, it's the second chapter. I am in the second chapter, but I'm trying to look for that particular... <sighs> ay, 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 can't seem to find that now. Okay, let me come back to you. Hopefully, I'll find it in a bit. Okay. Yeah, uh, Rakesh, I'll, treat, I'll see if I can get back to you. But the last one uh, does have the whole thing done very differently compared to what we used to. Yeah? So in the, sorry, uh, yes. on the other ways, uh, when the second or the third way we sent, yes. uh, it is used, as you said, it is using the raw materials which are created Correct. on the previous. The previous one, it will withdraw it, bring it back to its original form. But when it releases, it goes into the next power. So if it was 49 to the power of two, which it took in, when it releases, it becomes 49 to the power of three. Okay. And yeah. in that case, 49 to the power of three, again, it will get back, no? Taking the 49 to the power of three for the next wave. Correct. And then releases it into 49, releases at 49 to the power of four. Ah, okay. And each Till wave... it comes to 49 to the power of six, which is the last one. At that point, there's no more release. So that's why it ends there. Ah, okay. But in that, the process is different because there's no more throwing out. Then it figures out what to do and starts to create, I think, uh, was the seven uh, kingdoms. So I, that's why I wanted to go back to look at that for a bit. Okay, yeah? fine. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. You're most welcome, Rakesh. I'll see if I can find it before we end the session. Great. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. Someone's trying to give me the pages. Okay, the problem is in this book, it's really a tiny book, so I'm not too sure where, where that uh, lies. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, so let's move on. Um, could you please explain the last outpouring once again? Uh, page 39, last para. Okay. All right, so um, the final and the last, okay, before we do that, let's uh, invoke. It's all, uh, I think most of them are here. There might be some still joining. Uh, right now, we're going to be going um, live. Uh, this is actually going to be streamed on Vimeo, just like we do all other World Pranic Healing programs, so that more people, as time goes, can continue to join whenever they like. So let's close our eyes, connect tongue to our palate, inhale and exhale, relax your body. Feel yourself in the presence of the Supreme Being, our teacher, the teachers of Theosophy, the great masters, the beings of knowledge, light, and power. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chur, Koksvi, to Lord Maha Guruji Mailing, to Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, to Yehoshua Ba Miriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to all the masters and teachers of Theosophy, to all the invisible and spiritual helpers, the angel beings of knowledge, light, and wisdom, we humbly ask you to help us to be open and receptive to your priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge, to have a greater and deeper understanding of your great plan, and with this understanding to become a better divine instrument and help manifest your divine plan on earth. We thank you in full faith. Be aware of the energy coming down. Inhale, exhale. Release it into your entire being. Repeat it two more times.
You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. All right, uh, so when we were talking about the final outpouring, we were referring to um, the uh, group souls, and we were talking about how the energy from the monad comes down, down, down further, and then it stays at the level of the higher mental world. Yes, doesn't go further. Now, for it to come further from the animal kingdom, the animal will have to then have contact with human, get domesticated, and then raises its brain and its emotional and mental state to such an extent that it is time for it to individualize, which means when that energy comes, so the response now, this one has stopped here, it cannot come any further, but this one will start to send a response downward up, and then it reaches the higher mental, and then one of those fragments, yes, which is called one of our higher souls, uh, we all are there as fragments there. So the response from this individualized animal soul will reach up and then that higher soul will start to now descend to take on a physical human body that you and I have. Yes, and so that is the last outpouring that they talk about in the previous chapter. So today we're going to go to chapter five, the constitution of man. Now this is a very, very long chapter to an extent. And so we might have to split it between today and tomorrow. So we will uh, be looking at this today and tomorrow. And so to start off with, uh, let's talk about us. And this is something that Master Cho has already taught us. So I think it should be easier uh, for you and me to now handle this. And let me open up, uh, let me make that full screen and then go back to, sorry, one second. Yeah, so let's see if it will open up. Okay, so, oopsie, I thought it would be in the front. Okay, so we are at chapter five, the constitution of man. So this is basically our evolution. Now going back to again, where we come from, uh, we usually don't talk too much about the first world, which is a divine world. We don't know too much about it. However, at the monadic world level, the divine spark is actually there. Yes, in the book, it's also referred to as the divine fire. In our case, in Master Cho's books, it's re referred to as the divine spark. So we, the divine spark, all individual divine sparks are actually there. Yes, so there is this vast, huge collection of uh, souls out there. Now, from that point, this divine spark or a monad, which is how they call uh, the divine spark also in this level, has what is called three aspects. Yes, and so the three aspects from the level of the monadic world comes downwards. Now, when it comes down to what is called your spiritual world, yes, one of that aspect, which is the spirit of man, remains at that level. It doesn't go further. Now, the second aspect from your divine spark comes down to the next level, which is referred to as the intuition of man, which is at your intuitional world level. So that's the second aspect. And then the third aspect lands and ends in the three higher parts of the mental, mental world or the, what we call the higher world. It stops there. And so the third aspect is the intelligence in man. That is where it stops. So from the divine spark, even from the divine spark, there are three aspects. Yes. So one remains at the spiritual world, the second one at the intuitional world, and the third one in your higher mental world. Now, once it reaches the higher mental world, this is why we were talking about, you know, the energy comes and stops. Now it needs a corresponding energy from down below. And so this is where we move into the next phase. So we're coming down. And now to further understand this a little bit more. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> excuse me. All right, so to further understand this, let's go uh, a little step further down. Now, so it says that thus man, as we know, 
that's you and I, in reality is actually the divine spark residing in the monadic world, shows himself as the higher soul at the higher mental world. Yes. And so at the higher mental world where we are looking at the third aspect is where you and I are then referred to as the higher soul. So let's also understand it like this. So you have the monadic world, not the entire divine spark can come down. So only a part of it, which is the three aspects come down. However, in the three aspects, the first aspect cannot go further than the level of the spiritual world. Yes. And so only two other aspects can go further down. Now, the, even in those two, the second aspect cannot go beyond the intuitional world. And so in the end, there's only one aspect that is a third aspect of uh, the divine spark that reaches the higher mental world. And then you have what is what you and I create uh, or is created at that point is your higher soul also referred in these books as the ego. Yes. And so that's how you come down. So it says here shows himself as a higher soul in the higher mental world, manifesting these three aspects of himself, spirit, intuition, and intelligence through that vehicle of the high mental world, which we will now call the causal body. So it's even though the energies uh, kind of stop, or if you call the divine sparks aspect stops at these three, still the energies still come down to help create what is called your causal body. And this is also the place where your higher soul resides permanently. For the higher soul to go further down, it's not possible as well. All right, so let's just remember that. And then I'd like to move now to going downwards further, right? So now you are already the higher soul. You are in the causal body or the three higher levels of the mental aspect or the higher mental world. Now from there, when you decide to incarnate and take on a physical body, before you can even take on the physical body, this is how you go downwards, yes? So as you're going downwards, what you would do is you will draw to yourself matter from the lower mental body. That is the four levels that are still remaining in the lower mental world. You will draw in matter around to create what is called your mental body. Now, this is a body through which you can actually have what is called concrete and abstract thoughts. So interestingly, when we talk about pranic healing, you have the abstract mind and you have the concrete mind. Yes. So the mental body is usually associated with these two chakras as well. Yes. So before you can come down and take on this physical form, you have to first create the matter for the mental body. Now, once you've done that, then you'll come down even further, now entering from the lower mental into the astral world. Now, again, in the astral world, you will draw around yourself astral matter. And so when you draw the astral matter together, you then create for yourself your astral body through which you and I have emotions, we have passions, we have desires. And so the chakras associated with passions, with emotions and desires is basically your heart and your solar plexus. So you'll find that these two are again connected to what Masucho refers to as the emotional body or the astral body. And then only after this can you come further down and then help create this physical body that you and I have. Yes, to be able to come in the form of a baby, the other two bodies have to be created and then coming down, your etheric body and your physical body are then created. Now, why do we need this physical body? Because as the higher soul, if you want to evolve and grow, you have to go through certain experiences. You have to go through uh, certain, um, you have to develop certain qualities in you in order for this for the soul to start to evolve. And for whatever reason, that happens on this physical level. Yes? And so I, I usually tell people, I say, you know, um, if you do not have this physical body, the usual issues that we have in life, for example, your, your physical form and the health of the physical form, if you don't have a physical body, do you have to worry about your health? No, right? You don't have to worry about your health. You won't have issues with your health, whether it's a, it's a system that is not functioning, a, 
particular organ that's not functioning, you don't have a problem. Now, if you did not have a physical body, will you have to worry about money? No, <laughs> no worry with money, right? Because you can just live anywhere. You're just this amazing being of light. You can just float and move around. You don't need a house. You don't need to feed yourself. You don't need to figure out whether the body's uh, 15 today or 50 today. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't need to worry if you don't have a physical body. Now, if you do not have a physical body, will you have relationship issues? Even if you have emotions, you just see this, this being of light and then you say, okay, you know what, doesn't matter. You are light, I am light, let's just merge. Kalas, it's over. <laughs> you don't have to worry about things, right? Life is so much easier if you were just uh, what you and I call or refer to as a soul. So this body is, is truly important, is, a tr is an important vehicle through which we have to learn our lessons. Lessons that you and I can learn only on this physical world, only when we are there with other humans and we have to sustain this body. And so Master Cho continues to go on many times. He says, um, he, he met with this, <clears throat> I think it was a Tibetan monk and he was very unwell and he was lying down on the bed and he says, you know what? If you had only used the teachings to take care of your body's health, you could have done so much more service in three years. Lying horizontally did not give you any positive experience in life. You couldn't meditate. You couldn't do service. You couldn't do anything that you wanted to do. And so that's why it is very important for you and I to stay healthy and keep this body healthy. No matter which part of the world you are, we have to keep this body healthy because if we don't have this body going well for us, you're not going to be able to do two and a half meditation, any meditation. Yes, you're not going to be able to take care of your family. The family will have to take care of you. If your body is not healthy, you will be spending a lot of money that you earn in the hospitals and doctors and, and whatever tests and other things that are there. Yes, there is karma where you and I have to go through certain experiences to learn and become better. Otherwise, we will need this body to continue learning our respective lessons. Yes, so even if you've heard this before from me or someone, if it's coming back to you again and again, and what I'm saying is, is kind of hitting a soft part, uh, a soft spot, then it means that you have to give it attention or it's time to start giving it attention. All right. And so um, coming back, so you and I then require this body. And so we come from the high soul, we create matter for our mental body, our astral body, and then we have our physical body. We take on a certain shape and we continue. And so what happens? Uh, now, when they try to help, uh, science tries to help to understand uh, what we call a soul. This is the closest that they can talk about, which is what you and I call the higher soul. But still, they don't have complete evidence of its existence. Anyway, uh, so now you've got to remember that the higher soul does not get affected by your life that you lead here. Yes, whether you're born, whether you die, it doesn't affect the higher soul in any way. Yes, it gets you to come here to, to continue to learn your lessons and go back. But otherwise, the higher soul only, it, it actually remains more or less the same. It only starts to, in, uh, what I would call, grow internally, but more or less is the same. It doesn't get affected by our so-called existence on the earth, except the good qualities that we might develop as we go. Now, when you look at the life, which we, we mentioned, I think, uh, probably in the first or second chapter, for the higher soul, our, our lifetime right now is just but one day in its whole existence, right? And so whatever you and I take from this lifetime is what we will add to the growth, yes, or the improvement of our higher soul. And so again, to repeat myself, it mentioned here, he is in no way affected by what we call birth or death. Yes, and our life is only one day in its uh, entire evolution. And so it goes on to say, the higher soul in the higher mental world can take on vehicles, right? So it, it needs, for example, the physical body. It needs the emotional body. It also needs the mental body. 
and so uh, when it it decides to descend yes it draws around itself matter of the lower mental which we call which we just mentioned as a mental body this is the instrument through which you can think yes all of the concrete thoughts the abstract thoughts then again it draws around itself astral matter which we call his astral body and through this instrument you're able to feel passion emotions and so on now interestingly uh, with reference to especially our emotional body we are also we also get stuck with emotions and feelings that are very personal and even can be very selfish yes so selfishness uh, is something that can also start developing inside these uh, respective bodies so only after having assumed these intermediate vehicles can then this particular higher soul take on or be born into the world as we know it yes so that's basically what i was talking about right now and so it continues to come here to gain experiences yes and to also learn uh, to do certain things and also develop certain qualities that are required uh, in its growth process so the physical body once it's done whatever it had to in the 70 years or 100 years that it decided to leave once this body is worn out then it reverses the process so we've just come down we finished with it the body is more or less you know done with its whole life process and so the last line the reverse process starts and what do i mean by the reverse process so as it now moves backwards going back home to its higher soul this is the incarnated soul it will first release the physical body yes the physical body is just like clothes that you and i wear on a daily basis so today i'm wearing this but tomorrow i might wear something else yes and so the body that i have this lifetime looks like this but tomorrow it might look completely different and so what i do is firstly i release or i lay down my physical body and then my entire life yes the life energy moves into the astral world into my astral body where i will continue to live for some time now once i finish with my life in the astral world which means uh, even in the astral world there are seven layers and so i have to move you know i brought my son's little uh, <laughs> i don't know if it's going to help but uh, can you see this board <laughs> this is my son's board <laughs> so uh, if you can see what i'm doing so you have the astral world can you see that or oh, it's not very visible okay let me see if i can use a different color it's trying to see some way because this is almost impossible to draw on that and so you will see these layers one two three four five six seven so you have one two three four five six and the seventh layer and so even in the astral world you have to move from the can you see you have to move from the lowest level of the astral or the densest level to the highest level and so depending on what we've done we will take time to move from the lowest to the highest level and so that is your lifespan on the astral level and so once you've done okay let me move this okay so once you've done this process where you have moved from the densest part of the astral body through the highest level of the astral body then you let go of the astral body as well so you take it off and then you move into the mental body and so again in the mental body you have the lower five yes and so you have sorry the lower four which is called the lower mental and you will stay in that lower mental for a certain time and then only then when you finish with that whole process so you'll go from the lowest to the second lowest to the third lowest the fourth low once you finish that you move into the higher mental which is the causal body which is home for the higher soul and then you stay there i call it your summer vacation so you don't have anything to learn you can do whatever you want you can enjoy you can sleep as long as you want <laughs> nothing to worry about summer vacation and then after some time uh, it's time again to come back down here so let's go back into this process a little uh, more in depth and so when you look at uh, the body okay let me just see how this goes here so i can follow this 
All right. So like I mentioned, when you have left the physical body and you go into the astral world, depending on how you dealt with emotions in your physical world, you will have to then work towards them in your astral body. So if you develop more positive qualities in the physical world, yes, where you were being kind, altruistic, you were helping others, you were being very generous and kind, that means you were opening up more your heart. Then what happens in this little board that we were talking about earlier, you will move into the higher levels of the astral world. Yes? However, if the vibrations of your emotions that you created, which is anger and hatred and, uh, you know, gluttony, there was excessive uh, use of power, which even caused harm to others. When those emotions are created by you, then the vibrations of these emotions will be at the lower level. Yes. And so then when you move from your physical body, say this is your physical body. Yeah. You will then probably move only to the lowest ones. And so you will remain here for a while before you can go to the next one, the next one, the next one. And only then you'll, you'll then move into the mental. Yes. So depending and so based on the life that you have led in this physical world, your astral life will then vary. Yes. And so let me read this part for you from the book. His physical life, whatever he has done in his physical life, if there is much of these, the astral body is strongly vitalized by, by it and will persist for a long time in that body. Yes. However, if there is but little emotion that was generated in the physical world, the astral body has less vitality and he will soon be able to cast off that vehicle aside and move on to the next. So one is the type of emotions that you've created. The second is a quantity or the amount of emotions that you have created. Yes. So both kind of affect your life in the astral world. Now the strength of um, the strength again, when it comes to moving into the mental body again, depends on what you have done in the physical world. So what have you developed in the mental aspect of your physical life will now again have its imprint, imprint on your mental body and therefore the growth in the mental world. And so it says here, the strength of that depends upon the nature of your thoughts to which he had habituated himself. That is when you were in the, in the earth world or in the physical world. And usually his stay at this le level is a long one, right? So say, for example, you were interested in architecture and you were really pursuing it and you, you were doing fantastic work here. When you leave and you go into the mental world, you have a lot more that you can actually learn and understand and comprehend. Yes. So by that time, your emotions don't bother you because you've left your emotional body at this point. There is purely just mental growth in the mental body. There are no emotions. You're not going to get upset if this doesn't go well. You're not going to get jealous about somebody else's work. Nothing. There is no emotion uh, here because there is no emotional body. So it's purely mental. It depends on the faculty that you developed here. The same will continue as you evolve into the mental body. And then in the end, he, the higher soul will reach the causal uh, level or the three higher levels of the mental body, the higher mental, and stay there for a while. Now, you've got to remember that some, peop some souls, because they haven't evolved ev enough, when they go into the causal body, the causal body, the vibration is really, really fast. But they can't feel it because they haven't developed enough. So the book says it's something like your eye. Your, your eye has not developed to be able to see the vibrations of ultraviolet rays, though it exists. So similarly, when you go back to the highest soul, when you are there, you will realize that you can't, you, you can't sense anything much. And, sen and so then you might decide your two months summer vacation becomes short like two weeks. And you say, you know what, enough. I don't think I'm getting anything here. I'm going back. And so at that point, if you feel you need to then come down 
to vibrations that you're familiar with or vibrations that you feel you can live and feel alive, then again, you come down. Yes, so again, you create the mental body. Again, you create another astral body. Then again, you create what is called your physical body. Now, remember, if, if the first journey that we were talking about, you had created your mental and astral body, the second time you come around, you do not have the same astral body or the mental body. The material that is then there for you to create your astral or mental body is completely different. Yes, so the material that is then used to create your, as, sorry, first your mental body and then your astral body is completely different, including the physical body. Your physical body doesn't look anything like your earlier physical bodies. And so they say this is one of the reasons why we never remember when we come into the physical body the jivatma or the incarnated soul doesn't have memory of its previous lifetimes. However, the higher soul up there has memory of all your lifetimes. And sometimes the thoughts, the vibrations come through matter, through all the denser matter into the physical level. And some people then recollect one of their lifetimes or maybe a portion of a lifetime or an experience in a lifetime. Do you understand? So because we have completely different mental material, emotional material, and physical material, there is no memory of anything that was done previously. Yes? It's like when you demolish a house and you rebuild it. Yes? The whole memory of that previous house completely disappears. Now you will not go up the stairs here because there are no stairs. Yes, the stairs in the new house is back there. So the same way with the material in our astral and mental body, it starts to, uh, it is different and therefore you don't have any recollection of any previous lifetimes. Yeah. Is this clear so far? Yes. So we're going to go to a few more points uh, and then we will end again for today. Now, uh, where am I now? So then it mentions that each man is therefore exactly what he has made himself during the past lifetimes. Yes. So though the material is very, very different, your actions from your previous lifetimes, remember we spoke about different days. So uh, yesterday or a last week, whatever you have created in those lifetimes will then influence your present physical life, which is basically your karmas. Yeah. So whatever you did in your past will catch up at some point and there partially will be in your presence. So, say, so it says, each man is therefore exactly what he has made himself during those past lives. Yes. If he has developed good qualities in himself, he possesses good qualities even now. Now, if he has uh, neglected to train himself and therefore developed uh, weaknesses, addictions, uh, evil dispositions, then that will continue to remain here because you have to work out of it, right? Uh, so something as simple as say, um, uh, a person who gets extremely irritable or very, very stubborn. If you notice when you have a, a child at home, they say, yes, everything comes from the father and mother. So you realize, yes, this must be my quality. That must be his quality or father's, or father's side or mother's side or whatever. But you'll also notice that that child has his own traits which is not fathers, which is not mothers. And then you wonder, my God, where did you get this from? That is that child's karma. Of course, the karma is also, be, uh, like I said, there's family karma, but there's also their own individual things that they have to learn. So you'll notice maybe father, mother are not stubborn, but this child is super stubborn. And you wonder, how can you be so stubborn? Your parents are so different. Hello, I'm different. I'm a separate individual. I'm a separate higher soul that has manifested here. And so the qualities from their previous lifetime still latch on. Now, say, for example, they had a tendency, uh, an evil tendency to say steal. You'll notice that the family never does that. The family is even rich. But because that tendency is there from a previous lifetime, this child, even though she or he is very rich, will go into shops and try and, you know, steal things because that quality has not still been purified from the soul. That weakness still remains within the soul. Yes. And so to continue, the development of the ego 
is the object of the whole process of materialization. So our whole time that we are here in the physical materialistic world is just to help the higher soul develop. So remember we say that the higher soul is, is only pure. It's not perfect. Therefore, you and I cannot be perfect. So in order for us to become one with our higher soul, you and I have to purify. If we do not purify on all these levels, then we cannot unite with the higher soul. Why? Because the higher soul, the vibrations in the higher soul, remember it's the higher seven in the mental world. And so until and unless your vibrations become pure enough to go to the higher levels, you cannot unite with your higher soul. Not possible at all. Yes. Now, uh, if you look at the divine spark, the divine spark is more perfect. And so when you want to become one with your divine spark, that time you have to perfect yourself. And that's that we're not even going into at this point. So let's just move on. And so um, when we look at you and I as, as persons, as we uh, continue to evolve, you want to evolve way be beyond where you are. So let me just put up this. Um, I think one of my last slides for today. And so what I want you to look at is the higher soul, which is what the ego is. What does it want to do? We just mentioned here, we want to develop the soul. You want to develop the higher soul. And so one of the things that you want to do is you and I have what is called latent faculties within us, including spiritual faculties within us. And these have to unfold within us. Yes, whether you call it Siddhis that have to develop within us, whether you want to call it spiritual powers that will develop in, in us. You got to remember that you and I are ultimately spiritual beings. We're not just physical beings. We're not just astral beings. We're not just mental beings, but we are spiritual beings. And so that part has to develop and it has to unfold slowly, but surely as we evolve. And uh, what, what, what starts to happen as you start to develop is that... Um, You have to have a greater understanding of all the high worlds that are within you and around you. Yes, this understanding has to become deeper and deeper, not just here, but also in our experience. Yes, so the understanding of these higher worlds that we are surrounded by, the astral, the mental, uh, going on into the intuitional, spiritual, uh, monadic and divine, will slowly start to increase in our spiritual experiences. Yes. And lastly, they say you have to become fully conscious of any world you're in, whether it's the physical world. We think, yes, we know everything that's there in the physical world, but we're not fully aware of everything that exists even in this physical world. Remember, we were talking about those vibrations or undulations. We have to become fully conscious of all the vibrations, all the undulations, within this physical world. Even that we haven't reached. Then comes trying to understand all the undulations in the astral, in the mental, and then going on to higher worlds. Yes, and so he says, fully conscious in any given world involves the power to perceive and respond to all the undulations of that world. Therefore, when you look at uh, the, uh, when you look at the uh, ordinary person, well, most of them have not perfected. Even you and I haven't fully perfected uh, being conscious at any level that we are, right? Now, uh, they say that the causal... Um, no, wait, let me see where I want to go for this. Okay, so we're talking about the fully conscious and therefore the ordinary man has not yet perfected consciousness at any level or very, very little, not even the physical world. Yes, he thinks he knows, but it's not fully there. Is it possible for him to unfold his, uh, unfold his understanding of these different worlds? And it is by means of such development, that is our conscious development, that he will start to observe and he will start to understand and describe these things even to others once he understands it. Yes. So even for us to, to speak about it is difficult because most of us haven't even experienced or, or not even fully conscious, even on this physical level. Yes. And so again, the repetition here, the causal body is the permanent vehicle of the ego or the higher mental world. 
Yes, so that's the place, that's the residing place of our higher soul, doesn't come any further from that. So the evolution, um, the so once we evolve, well, once we are able to build our consciousness to the highest level, then you are actually referred to an adept. Yes, and so it says, the perfected man, who we refer to as to an adept, has then developed this to the fullest extent. So when we become fully conscious on the physical level, on our astral level, on our mental level, going into our higher mental, then you reach the level of an adept who, who's fully conscious of everything, not only in one world, but all the worlds. Yes, at least in the lower part we're talking about right now. Right, and so um, that is one aspect. And then one more aspect before I close for today. All right, so then when we look at uh, the so-called causal body, I was trying to get a picture of a causal body, but it's, I think the images don't kind of come anywhere close to what's written here. So when you look at an ordinary person's causal body, they say it's almost like it's transparent, like a bubble, yes? But as you start to develop physically, emotionally, mentally with higher vibrations, so your thoughts are becoming more positive of a high vibration, your words are more positive, your actions are more positive, then they say the hues or the colors in that causal body of yours starts to show color. Yes, and it can go to a point as you develop more and more that it becomes vibrant and truly beautiful. And I remember somewhere I read that it, it looks like a beautiful body that exists out there. And so we look at some of the colors in, in a bit. So it says, as advancement continues, it is gradually stirred into alertness by vibrations which reach in from the lower bodies and comes up slowly to the higher part. And then ultimately your entire being is filled with so much, so much light and so much color that it starts to kind of radiate in all directions. And at that point, you want to learn more, you want to understand more, you want to grasp more, you want to experience more. And so by that time, obviously, because even the body thirsts for it, uh, that is the incarnated soul's body thirsts for it, you will start becoming... Oops, all right, someone sharing stuff. <laughs> I didn't know this was possible. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. All right. So, uh, so these colors start to show in the astral body. And if you are very, very, a very, very good clairvoyant, you can actually see the causal body of some of these great beings. Yes, seeing ordinary people's uh, astral body doesn't, sorry, causal body doesn't look very interesting. So they say it looks like an object beautiful beyond any any conception at this point all right now within this some of these colors you already know so i thought i'll just read it so you know you have an understanding so the vibration which denotes the power of unselfish affection shows itself as a pale rose color within the causal body of the person now we're talking about only causal yeah we'll come to the others later just the causal body and then it says uh, that in intellectual power is a yellow, sympathy is green, blue is devotion, and luminous lilac blue is higher spirituality. So if you can look at these colors, you're talking about pale rose, a lovely yellow, green, blue, a lilac blue, this should be the color of what you call your causal body, yes? And so that would be the colors that are amazing and, and something that you can actually see. Now, this also applies to bodies which are built of denser material. So we're talking about the mental and the astral as well. So in the course of evolution, the lower worlds of man often introduce, again, within their respective bodies, similar colors. But the point is, at this point, the colors that we were talking about in the causal body and then moving into the mental or the astral body, they say, become less delicate and less lively. So, you know, the, the most beautiful light pink you've seen is, is <laughs> the densest color of the actual pink that exists in your causal body. The most beautiful lilac color that you've seen is the densest and the least liveliest of all the lilac colors in the high vibrations going up to the causal. 
So, you know, the colors that we're talking about, they can't describe and therefore maybe the pictures cannot really give you uh, a good enough picture. So to move on, so if you look at it as you evolve in the lower worlds, in, the, in our lower bodies, for example, when you start to have uh, emotions of pride, irritability, sensuality, these like the rest, are their vibrations are of a lower grade. Yes. Um, so if you, if you look at the vibration, it's a lower, lower level vibration. And therefore, these lower vibration in all cases are basically what you call lower. And then there are subdivisions of this lower vibrations. And so they stay in the lower part of that body, whether it's a mental body or the astral body. Yes. And so depending on the kind of emotions you and I create, we create accordingly the same vibrations within our respective bodies, our emotional body, our mental body. Therefore, they say, therefore, they cannot reproduce themselves in the causal body. So if you have vibrations like this, like pride or jealousy and anger, this cannot reside. It cannot go up into your causal body. And so it says the three subdivisions that we're talking about, uh, the lower mental, the astral and the physical body, will have to purify itself because otherwise it cannot go back home to the causal level. So to uh, more or less end this part, built into our higher soul is nothing but good qualities. The evil qualities which he develops, that he will have to then naturally throw aside as he advances. So whoever we are, whatever it is that we have, even if we don't show to others and we know we have that limitation, we will have to overcome it. So he says the difference between a savage and a saint is that the first looks empty, if you look at the causal body, uh, and colorless, while the second is full of vibrant, yes, um, coruscating tints. As the man passes beyond even sainthood and becomes a great spiritual power, his causal body starts to increase in size and radiate in all directions. And lastly, in one who has attained adeptship, his body is of enormous dimension. Now, even with the mental body that is built of the lower uh, vibrations of the lower four subdivisions of the mental world, the expression that is your concrete thoughts also influence this body. So he says uh, the hues again in this particular are somewhat delicate, uh, but less delicate than the causal. So a thought of pride shows itself as orange on the uh, mental body. Irritation manifests as a brilliant scarlet. And when someone uh, has like a bright brown, it is um, avarice. And then gray brown is selfishness and gray green is deceit. So just like the emotions that we spoke about, our thoughts will also create similar vibrations and most of them not very positive vibrations, also in the lower mental. And so we need to bring our, our energies or our vibrations higher. Now, say for example, someone has devotion, but it's tinted with selfishness. So even though devotion has this beautiful hue, yes, it will have this brownish, uh, brownish tinge or brownish color around it. So when you look at the aura of a person, even though the person is very devotional, it might still look murky or muddy. And you'll wonder why, because the lower vibrations are also mixed with the higher vibrations. So until and unless we purify out of our selfishness, out of our pride, those positive uh, vibrations may not even be fully seen. Yes. Now, I'm sure you experienced this when you finished with your meditation, you had a great meditation and then you go back to your family and your friends and then you get really annoyed. And they're like, what's wrong with you? You just finished two hours of meditation. Why are you screaming and shouting? <laughs> and so, though you have love in you, yes, with, with the amazing meditation that you had, you also have the lower vibration of anger or irritation that comes. And it's, it's almost like that kind of overwhelms this positive emotion and no one can see the love anymore, including you. <laughs> you can only see that anger and irritation kind of coming out and surfacing in your relationship. And then you wonder... <sighs> How come I am not becoming better? <laughs> I'm not supposed to do these things. I'm not supposed to be violent or abusive or angry. I've been purifying myself. But you see, our purification may not be as enough. 
So you might have done like 15 minutes of purification and then you do one and a half hours of meditation. It doesn't compare, right? Not just you, even I have to be aware of this on a constant basis because of the amount of work we're all putting in in this, in this so-called lockdown, we have to do sufficient purification. Otherwise, uh, these other limitations, these other vibrations also get this energy and kind of increase as well, yeah? And so uh, we are trying to get to a place where you and I can be in a better state, yes? I think I'll end here uh, because what I have is, again, going back into um, the higher soul, the causal vehicle, and how, how it's created uh, with reference to these emotions and thoughts. I hope this has been simple enough and easy to understand, not too complex for you. So to understand how we've come, how we, we create all our bodies, we've come at this point and how we go back. And to go back also, we have to not only just let go of the body, but we have to also purify ourselves further before we go back home to our higher soul. Yes, so we'll talk a little bit more about the higher soul tomorrow and proceed, hopefully, <laughs> with the rest of the chapter. I think we're somewhere halfway there. Uh, but we should hopefully finish off the fifth chapter tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do we carry emotions of plant kingdom and animal kingdom to the human king kingdom where uh, we are evolving? Yes, I think certain characteristics do come through and it's, not, it's more the instinct. It's not that, uh, you know, the instinct, uh, they call it the I'm not going to call it, okay, basic instinct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you are aware, there are certain things that you would just do. And then they say, oh my God, you know, you're just like an animal. But that's uh, part of survival. And so those are required for the human race to survive and it will do certain things. Uh, but not necessarily your anger is because you were a certain type of animal. <clears throat> not necessarily that. Yeah. So because you're ferocious, <clears throat> you are not necessarily a lion. So not necessarily in that sense, but yes, your instincts might come from uh, the animal that you probably took uh, evolution more in. But usually, again, it's, it's all over the place, so you can develop a more wholesome experience. When we study about the seven rays, we study that it was created with different breadth of the solar logos. Uh, so is it the same that we talked about with reference to impulse? Uh, well, I'm sure the seven breaths, uh, the seven rays, uh, the seven planes, the seven races are all connected. Yes, uh, we just have to try and find this huge jigsaw puzzle to start putting it all in. And so like uh, one of the things I remember uh, Master Chow would say, he says, you know, if you become a Jnana Yogi, there's enough to kind of fill your brain uh, more than just one lifetime. The point is, he says, just studying and understanding is not enough. You have to use this knowledge and manifested as karma yoga. So understanding is not enough. You have to teach others. Yes, uh, you realize that when you teach others, you become better at the subject as well. And so he says, you can't just keep it here. You have to do something about it. So he says, being a karma yogi is amazing because you go out there and do work. But again, a karma yogi cannot go without an Agni chakra. You need a plan. You need to know what you're going to go and do. So you need to have a goal. Right. So the development of all chakras are important. The development of all the different rays are important. And the, and the overcoming of our limitations, purifying ourselves is truly the most important and the key to our spiritual growth going forward. OK. OK. Voice not clear in between. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> OK. Someone is talking about no need for food, money, blah, blah, blah. Um... Only some matters from previous plane descends. What happens to the remaining matter? Yes, uh, when we talk about the matter, the matter that comes down uh, is what is required to further create the lower levels of um, the kingdoms or uh, the manifestation of those planes. However, when, uh, when you need only that much, which is a small portion of what is already there with reference to the bubbles, then you keep only what is required to create that level. The rest you give because there are many more levels that are coming down and, and they're also in a process of multiplying. You know, it's just like when you look at the sperm and the egg and then when you look at the cells, how it multiplies and grows is, is truly amazing. But that's similar to how that breath can starts off with just that much with 49 and then just multiplies to create the entire huge uh, solar system, the whole uh, solar being. Yeah, not a baby, but, but a whole being. 
higher soul is the operating system. Um, I presume you're talking about with reference to the incarnated soul. Okay. Is it, uh, is it same for everyone? I'm not too sure what is the same for everyone. All right, let's move on. Yes, I need to figure out these whiteboard features in Zoom and others. Uh, but for now, I found this the easiest <laughs> since my little boy's whiteboard is sitting here. Isn't it home for only part of the higher soul? Um, with reference to the causal body, it is the residence or the home of the higher soul. Yes, once it starts to go upwards, the higher soul then wants to become one with its divine spark. That is the next process of union, which we also call God realization. At what level do we incarnate again? We incarnate as long as you have karma to work out. Uh, you incarnate as long as you have, um, as long as you have things to develop and grow as, as a soul. And of course, to neutralize your karma. Yes, once you've become pure enough, then you will not have to come back again. Then you, you finish with this cycle, you move to the next cycle, which is the higher soul and the divine spark. Yeah. All right. Uh, how many years in the astral world really depends on what you've developed and therefore it could be a short period. But like I men mentioned, uh, most spiritually evolved people because their emotions are more on the higher level, stay in the higher level for a longer period of time and then move up. Yes. Uh, very, very highly developed people might just pass through it really, really quickly and go all the way back to their highest soul. Can we recollect experiences that we've had in the astral, mental and causal world? Uh, astral world, yes. Every night that you go to sleep, you move into what is called the astral body and do travel in the astral world. So there are many people who remember their dreams and come back. You also move into this during your meditation. So sometimes you have inner experiences. You see the light, you see beings, you see, or you see colors, you see images again at that point. Uh, mental world, not really. And causal is only when you have gone uh, back home. And like I said, problem is you will not remember most of this because the material that we've used to create our present mental and astral body are completely new, including the physical body and its brain. Okay, can I have the previous audio recordings? Uh, we're working on it. We will try and put up all the recordings on Vimeo. Uh, so since today is the first day we've gone live on this, this has been recorded also on Vimeo. And all other recordings will be there for you to go back, listen. Um, now remember when there are mistakes in, in, in the recording, it's not uh, the book's problem, it's mine. So maybe my talking or my misunderstanding might have made mistakes in, in what was said, but please remember to always use the book. The book is the, the true knowledge that you and I can get. Okay. Image source, Lucy's trust. Yes, but I haven't found something that, uh, that comes close in comparison to what is written. What are the parameters that are considered while moving from lower level to higher level in the astral world? So the parameters are the, uh, you're talking about the astral, which is the emotion, is the amount of positive emotions that you have created here, that you have developed here on your own. Yes. And uh, if you have less of the lower vibrations, those vibrations don't affect you uh, because the, you don't go into the lower vibration because there's nothing for you to learn and grow from that. So you go automatically into the high vibrations of the astral body because of the positive astral emotions that you've been creating for a while. Uh, then how the three seeds work? <laughs> Good question. Um, the blue pearl has the memory of the past life. Yes, it does. So that's a very tiny particle. If you can get into that particle, that is connected, remember, to the higher soul. Yes. Uh, so one of the access points to the higher soul is actually that. So you have to try and figure out, is it actually the one that has all the emotion, uh, all the information, or is it because it has a direct link to the big, huge hardware up there? <laughs> it's able to give you all the information. Uh, the seeds are also uh, important here. Now the seeds come at different points, but they create again, uh, each of those bodies in line with the physical uh, body that's ultimately there. Yes. And so all those things get created uh, in, 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 in that nine months that you and I require. 
So with reference to your karmas and other things all come in there. So it's like raw material is there, but the way they're going to place it around the physical body, around the astral body will then depend on uh, the journey or the destiny of that particular incarnated soul. Yep. All right. Uh, we are done for today. Oops. I thought we finished that. Wasn't that the last one? Oh, no. Don't have clarity about seven bodies, seven energy, seven astral, seven physical causal. Uh, yes, this part about the seven bifurcations we haven't still come to. Yeah, so don't worry about that. We'll come to that in a bit. Coming back uh, to a new life takes lots of effort for coming down from the higher soul, but there are cases the child is still born dead uh, during during birth. Okay. So when a child is still born, uh, which means that the mother has gone through nine months of bringing that child to that level, when the child is still born, uh, you've got to remember then that the span of life of that particular incarnated soul, because the incarnated soul comes in only in the seventh month, was practically maybe two months. And so the lesson is not for the higher soul. The lesson is for the mother and or the father or the family. So the karma is for them to deal with uh, the loss of a child, uh, for the mother to have borne the child for so many months and then had uh, a stillborn child. And so the karma is more for the parent or the family to go through. Yes, uh, for the higher soul, there's nothing much. There's nothing been painful, nothing difficult. It just came. That's what it had to do. And it goes back. Yeah. So you'll have to figure out how come this person has to then have an experience where they lose a child. Why would you have to lose a child? What would have been your action in the past to create this in your present? That's what you have to meditate on. Yes. So that's with even flowers more beautiful than these colors exist. <laughs> uh, if you're talking about the colors that we're referring to in the causal level, I don't think those colors can even come anywhere close to the physical not even the highest physical level, yeah? So, uh, man adept is guru or arhat. Okay, we'll come to all that in a bit. Uh, it happened with me today itself. Something happened to that person today itself. Okay, people, I think that's, that's, uh, that's a wrap up for now. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time. We'll come back tomorrow. Uh, we'll continue with the fifth chapter. And... Uh, Let's see how quickly we can finish with this. We have how many days left? Almost two weeks for lockdown to complete. Life will change for all of us. But hopefully with all this knowledge, with all the meditation, with all the blessing and purification, when you go out there, you would be a better person. So let's end. Close your eyes. Connect unto your palate. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chok, Oxy Lord Mahagaraji Nele, to all the great ones, to all the beings of knowledge, light, and power, to all the beings of the Theosophical Society, to our beloved teacher, without whom this wouldn't be easy for us, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your knowledge, for your wisdom, for the clarity and understanding of all these priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this and use it to become better divine instruments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, respect, and love, we thank you. Thank you, everyone. Atma Namaste. Enjoy your evening, and I'll see you tomorrow evening, or I think I'll see some of you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Yeah? Enjoy the morning meditations. Try and see that uh, you prepare yourself with enough exercise, if not more, so you can handle uh, higher qualities or more subtle energies. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste. Okay, it's been... Uh, trying to see if there's any question I've left. Yeah, I think it's gone all the way back. Okay, Animal Zodiac Chinese Astrology. I'll have to look at how many are there. So if you mention that, maybe something could click here. Yes, there are sessions by Acharya Dani on the 10th and 17th. We're just working on that. 
So when he talks, I obviously will not come here. <laughs> I'd like all of you to redirect yourself to listening to Master Danny. Uh, we'll take a break on those respective days if you're still talking. 10th, definitely we, we were supposed to. So we will move our study session and we leave a note here without my voice. I, I noticed yesterday my voice was still on. The audio was still on. Okay. All right. When the dog is trying to reach the causal, are we talking about the soul or the body of the dog? Uh, we're talking, remember we spoke about the group soul becoming smaller and smaller in number till it can become individualized, that is, it becomes one. That one soul is the one that tries to reach up to the causal to try and bring about uh, the incarnated soul coming down or the jivatma coming down as a human being. During purgatory, how many, how many levels of this is astral mental? Okay, we'll come to that hopefully later. But purgatory is the lower level of the astral world. Okay. Okay, people. Uh, that's it. I'm going to say good night. Enjoy. Atma Namaste. I need to stop the recording as well. Bye. Take care. Bon appetit.